Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Brandon Lester Fishing. First of all, I wanna thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I know it's been a couple of weeks uh, since I've posted a video. I've been a little bit busy, so y'all bear with me. I'm still doing this whole YouTube thing, all the editing, all that kind of thing. I'm doing it all on my own. Um, you know, and that, that's just kind of the way I want to roll with this thing. I want it to be original. I want it to be my baby. Uh, I don't want, you know, to, to hire an editing team and all that kind of thing. It's just not, that's not how uh, I envision this deal going. So I, I want to do all of this myself. So in saying that, I'm going to be a little bit further behind because obviously, uh, if you didn't know, I do fish tournaments for a living. I mean, I'm, I fish the Bassmaster Elite Series as well as the Bassmaster Opens. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the past three weeks. Uh, we actually kicked off the season down on the Kissimmee chain, which is probably why you clicked on this video. Um, and I actually got the win in that one. And then after that, we kicked off the Elite Series two back-to-back -back events, all three of these in the state of Florida. So let's get into this tournament right here. Um, what I wanna talk about is how all this took place, how I got, this is my first um, Bass Master win. I think I've got 20 something top tens. Uh, this is nine years that I've been uh, a professional angler, that my sole income has been fishing the Bassmaster Elite Series, doing this for a living. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's a dream come true. And, and one of these days, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to tell you guys how I got my start, um, how I grew up fishing and how it evolved into tournament fishing and, and being on the Bassmaster Elite Series, how I qualified and all that, because it is a pretty cool story. And it's a story that I feel, um, you know, that I should tell. And maybe it'll inspire somebody uh, out there that wants to be a pro. But um, let's talk about how I did it at the Kissimmee chain and, and how I got the win there. So just to give you a little bit of history of my history with the Kissimmee chain of lakes, uh, first of all, the Kissimmee chain of lakes involves Lake Toho, which is where we put in. There's a canal. You have to go through a lock at the bottom end of Toho. You got Lake Cypress, you got Lake Hatchnahal, and then you've got Lake Kissimmee. And then there's another little lake that's a part of the chain called Tiger Lake. Um, big cold front leading up to this event. And I was late getting my boat together, uh, all that kind of thing. So I did not get there. I only gave myself two and a half days of practice for this event. And in the Bassmaster Opens, you can practice as long as you want. There is no cutoff on practice. Um, but I only gave myself two and a half days of practice because I felt like that's all I needed. There was a massive cold front that went through about four or five days leading up to that event. And I knew it would do me no good to get there before that cold front or during that cold front because it was completely going to change. And it absolutely did. That's probably the best decision I made from the get-go. I get there two and a half days before the tournament. The tournament starts on Thursday. I start practicing on Monday morning. I get out there Monday morning, water temperature is 54 degrees, 53 degrees, which is cold, cold for Florida, very cold. Um, only got five or six bites that first day. I spent my first day on Kissimmee. Um, and I fished several, to, to kind of preface this, I fished several uh, Bassmaster Opens on the Kissimmee chain in the past. I finished third there in 2015. I finished second there to Bobby Lane in 2018. Um, it's a place that I've always kind of liked. I felt like fit my style of fishing well, uh, and I understand how the fish act there. With that being said, uh, all those lakes change every single year. The grass is different. Uh, the water level is different every single year. So you, you can't just go back to the same places where you caught them in years past. You got to find new areas that have fish every year. So I get there that first day. I found one decent little area um, down on Lake Kissimmee. The second day I put in, it's starting to warm up a little bit each day. The second day, the water temperature warmed up to about 57, 58 degrees. And about midway through the day, I run into Lake Cypress. I get on the north shore of Lake Cypress and I start seeing beds just everywhere. About a hundred yards out off the bank, there's beds everywhere. Um, and the more I kind of started peeking around, I could tell they were not tilapia beds. I could tell they were bass beds. Um, by the size of the beds and the more I kind of started peeking around I started seeing some fish up cruising around those beds I actually had a 10 pounder marked out there that was locked on the bed in 58 degree water So, uh, you know that just kind of 
told me right there that if that fish was there spawning in 58 degree water, there were a bunch of fish coming to that area because, uh, you know, we were kind of around the time of a new moon. It was a warming trend followed by a big cold front and that's what makes those Florida fish spawn. So I kept that in the back of my mind. Uh, third day I went back, well, the third day I went, the, the half day of practice, I went up on Lake Toho, uh, looked around for something, you know, if, if I had some time when I came back through the lock, didn't really find anything that really helped me during the tournament. Fast forward, first day of the tournament, I locked through. I run a, I, I was a late boat number. Um, so I ran all the way down there to Kissimmee, started uh, over on North Shore in Kissimmee and uh, caught a few fish right off the bat on a chatterbait, uh, caught three keepers on a chatterbait. There were some mats blown in near, nearby, some isolated hyacinth mats. Uh, I finished out my limit there. I probably had maybe 11 pounds by 10.30, 11 o'clock. Um, and when that sun got up and got bright, I said, okay, it's time for me to go to Lake Cypress and see if I can make a little move. And sure enough, I went into Lake Cypress, uh, fished for the rest of the day, just kind of pitching at those beds and made a couple of key calls and I had 14, almost 15 pounds. I think I had 14, 13 the first day. Um, so day two rolls around. I just told myself, you know, 14, 13 on day one, I survived. I still have a chance to win the tournament. I've just got to bust them the next two days, but I felt like I survived. Uh, 28 pounds was leading after day one, but I knew it's, it's hard to be consistent on that chain of lakes. All right, day two comes around. Uh, I run back down there to Kissimmee. On day two, I had an early boat number. I was the first one, one of the first ones to the lock. I get through the lock, I get down to Kissimmee. I don't get a bite on my, my starting spot, my chatterbait hole. Um, the first three fish that I hooked on the second morning, they all three came off. The fish were biting real funny, they were acting real funny, and it would have been real easy for the wheels to come off the bus. And we'll be honest with you guys, it was, it was kind of hard to keep the wheels on because at 10.30 on the second morning, I didn't have a single fish. Um, and I, pull, I completely pulled the pug, plug on uh, Kissimmee and I ran to Cyprus and I said, well, it's either gonna go down in Cyprus or it's not gonna happen at all. And I'll be okay with it either way, but I hope it does happen. So I get to Cyprus, I start pitching around at those beds. Before long, I've got a small limit. I just keep culling up and keep culling up. Uh, you know, 215 rolls around. I've got maybe, I don't know, 13 and a half, 14 pounds, which would have been plenty good enough to get me a good check, don't get me wrong, but I knew I needed more to make that top 10. And I had drifted, my boat had drifted out, and I started seeing some fresh beds that I hadn't seen any boats around at all. 216 rolls around, 217 rolls around. I'm like, man, I'm gonna make one more pitch. I pitch over to this one last bed, it gets to the bottom, I shake it, thunk, I catch a five and three quarter pounder. That particular fish, I culled real quick. I told my, my co-angler, I said, we gotta go now. So I culled that fish, I hightail it back to the weigh-in, get back, I have, uh, 18 pounds on day two, and that gets me into the top 10. Uh, that fish was huge. I mean, without that fish, I do not have the opportunity to go to, go out on day three uh, and have a chance to win the tournament. So that was a really, really key fish. Now, the first two days we had sunshine, a little bit of wind, but I was kind of fishing in a protected area. Only problem was they were doing some dredging in the canal. Um, and there was a mud line that was coming out of where they were doing that dredging and it was, the wind was pushing that muddy water right on top of those beds. And I knew on day three, I knew I was not gonna be able to see. It was gonna be cloudy, it was gonna be windy. I was not gonna be able to see at all. And I knew if I was gonna catch them, I was gonna have to find them during the tournament and I was gonna have to find a different bait to figure out how to make them bite. So I get out there on the morning of day three, sure enough, all the stuff that I had fished the first two days was just completely blown out. It was chocolate mud. You, you could not get a bite in it. So I ran across to the other side of the lake um, because I knew the water would be clean over there. Immediately, it's about probably nine o'clock in the morning. I don't have a fish in the boat yet, but you know, I'm, I'm, I figure I've made the top 10 and I'm gonna go for it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna fish new water and if I find them, I know I can make it happen. I get over there, I set my boat down, I'm fishing around, it's the same scenario, it's a little bit of hydrilla, a little bit of eelgrass mixed in. I can't see any beds, but it's the same depth, it's about two to three feet of water. Um, and I see, a, I see a fish come blowing up on a shiner. 
So that let me know that there were some bass. It was a bass too. That let me know there were some bass in the area. Well, about two or three minutes after that, I catch a little small keeper. Well, the next thing I know, I've got a small limit, maybe six or seven pounds. And, um, you know, eventually I just kept going back and forth. It was about a 300 yard stretch. Eventually I kept going back and forth and I ended up catching a five and a half pounder and a seven and a half pounder out there. Uh, and that's what won the tournament for me. Had 18 pounds and something on day number three and was actually able to pull out the win. So um, it was really cool and it was a tournament where I had to adjust every single day. I always say that tournament fishing is all about making good decisions. The guy that makes, we all have about the, the same skill set um, when it comes to casting and being able to put your bait in a certain place and, and feeling a bite. And all, you can only go so far with all of that. It's right here. It's the mental part and it's the decision making process. And I've made as many mistakes as anybody, but this particular tournament, I'm, I, I'm not trying to toot my own, my own horn at all. I, I try to be as humble a guy. And if, if you guys have watched me very long, you know that, but I made really good decisions in this particular tournament. And, and I am, I'm pretty dang proud of that um, because that comes with years of experience. That comes from nine years of doing this and a whole lot of times me not making the right decisions, especially on that final day, uh, because it's so hard to, to just completely forget about what you did yesterday and go find them today and fish the conditions. But let's talk about the baits that were key, to, key for me, uh, my rods, my reel setup, and all that kind of thing for the week. First and foremost, the first two days, I caught them on a Gambler 5-inch Ace. It's a, it's a 5-inch Cinco style bait. Um, you know, everybody knows that, that Gambler stuff works really good in the state of Florida. Heck, it works anywhere. Uh, but I do like these Gambler Aces. They're really good soft stick worms. Um, they've got a really strong garlic scent to them. And I really like that. I think when fish are spawning, I'm a big believer in scent. You guys know that if you follow my channel. So that's what I caught them on. And, and you know, honestly, guys, I don't work with any soft plastics company. I'm not sponsored by Gambler at all. I'm not sponsored by any soft plastics company. Um, so I'm kind of using that as an opportunity to tell you guys, you know, what's out there. Give you guys an unbiased opinion about what good soft plastics are out there and what are not. So when you hear me talk about these different soft plastics companies, don't just think, hey, he's just saying that just because he's sponsored by that. That's not the case at all. I actually bought those just like anybody else. So just kind of want to throw that out there. I'm using it as a cool opportunity and I hope you guys can appreciate that. Um, but here's how I rigged that. I rigged it up just Texas rig um, with a 3 16 ounce Mustad Titan X worm weight. I pegged it. Um, I used two different hooks. Um, if, I'm, if I'm casting a soft stick worm, I like a Mustad grip pin big bite. If I'm just making short pitches with it, I like the Mustad grip pin max. It's more of a straight shank flipping hook style. And I feel like on shorter distance casts, I think you get better hookups uh, with the straight shank over the round bend. Uh, that's personal preference. Both of them, both of them will work really good. Uh, I use 17 pound vicious 100% uh, fluorocarbon. Um, and I used my 7.6 heavy Mustad Instinct rod um, is what I use for my rod. That's my signature series rod. They'll be out real soon. They'll actually be on Midway USA real soon, hopefully. Um, I will keep you guys posted as soon as they get on there uh, where you can find those. I used an eight to one uh, bait casting reel. That was my setup um, for the pitching around at the beds and stuff. And then on the chatterbait setup, I actually threw it on my seven foot three heavy. Uh, this is, we call this, the this is the Mustad Inst Instinct. And this is in the crankbait series. But I actually designed this rod for fishing mid-depth crankbaits as well as chatterbaits. It works perfect for three eighths and a half ounce chatterbaits. Uh, but seven foot three, it's a heavy, moderate action. So it's got a lot of bend in it, sort of a parabolic type action. Uh, so those fish have plenty of time to, to you know, really suck that uh, chatterbait in. I was throwing it on the same line, 17 pound vicious pro elite fluorocarbon. Um, a seven to one bait casting reel. And here is the exact chatterbait that I used um, to win the tournament. I'm gonna try to get that up close and personal with the camera so you guys can see. 
how beat up that blade is, how beat up that chatterbait is. That's the exact one. Um, I'm actually going to hang it on my trophy uh, in my living room as a con as a uh, conversation piece. It, it'll not be used anymore. It's retired, but um, that's a golden shatter color. I was putting a 3.3 inch Kitek uh, swing impact fat on the back of it. It's just a little 3.3 inch paddle tail swim bait. Uh, works works ex exceptionally well as a chatterbait trailer. I really like it as a trailer. Um, and that's a 3 8 ounce evergreen jackhammer uh, is what chatterbait that is. But obviously golden shiners are one of the main forage. Um, and actually those fish that I was catching on day number three, that's what they were spitting up was golden shiners. So, um, you know, you can find a ton of these different baits right here. You can find the hooks, the weight that I used. Um, you can find this chatterbait right here, that swim bait. You can find all this stuff on midwayusa.com. Um, you guys go check them out. Certainly appreciate you guys following along. I appreciate you watching this video. Um, like I said, we got some more cool stuff coming down the pipe, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, we're off to a great start this season, uh, and I'm excited. I'm getting ready to uh, take off and take out everything about Florida and put in everything for the Bassmaster Classic, and that'll be coming up next week. But um, I appreciate you guys following along. Stay tuned for future videos. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you liked the video. If you didn't, hey, that's all good. Just keep on scrolling. Don't do nothing. But I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time right here. Brandon Lester Fishing.